this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, if you're on social media at all, you know that Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, married to Prince Harry of the United Kingdom, is connected to the African-American family through her mother's lineage. And she is paying a black tax for being married to that man. So I'm just wondering, are African-Americans watching the ongoing harassment of Meghan Markle? Now, most African-Americans are going to say, I don't care what's going on with Meghan Markle. But it goes deeper than that because what's happening to Meghan Markle is connected to what happened to George Floyd, what happened in Topps Grocery Store a few weeks ago, what happened at Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina. All of this stuff is connected. And that one drop of black blood or however many drops of black blood that she has is mainly responsible for her being internationally humiliated, demeaned, lied on, and everything that can be done to bring a person down is being done to bring that woman down because she dared to marry someone from the British royal family. And I think that her African ancestry justifies African Americans having some degree of sympathy for her. She grew up in Southern California as a biracial, and she probably has experienced a lot of privilege, not only from being racially ambiguous, but by the environment, the Hollywood environment that she grew up in. A lot of black Americans who are not racially ambiguous, who look like black Americans, think they have privilege when they're brought up in that environment. So I believe that she thought she would be able to navigate the world as a, as a, as a privileged American who had you know, some, maybe some degree of wealth in her family at some point. And she has experienced racism. She, she has talked about the racism that she has experienced. Because Meghan Markle, no matter for whatever you can say about it, she's not going to leave her mama behind. That is a fact. She's not going to leave her mother behind. So even if you don't know she's black, you know her mom is black. So I think that I want, I, want, I want to just talk a little bit about what's happening to her because it's really, really, it's terrifying. I mean, in, in a sense, it's a terrifying thought that there is no place on earth that you can go to escape these people who insist that you have done damage to them and what they stand for. They stalk you. They lie on you. They gaslight you. They do things to you and blame it on you. They victimize you, and then they claim to be the victim, and then they control the national press in their country and some segments of the international press. That's terrifying. The coverage of Meghan Markle is all day, every day, every month, every week, every day of the year. There can't be enough horrible things said about her coming out of the United Kingdom and in some cases the United States because they're all in cahoots with this for real. Now, the most recent thing was that Meghan Markle was bullying people when she was over there in, in England before they left. The staff claimed that she was bullying them. So they had an investigation going. Now they put that out a few weeks, a few days before Meghan Markle gave that interview with Oprah Winfrey when she claimed they were racist and talking about how dark her child was going to be. So they jumped ahead of her and accused her of bullying people in the castle or in the palace or wherever they were. Now Meghan Markle a five foot three, I think five three or five five or something, probably not more than a hundred and five pounds. But she's over there bullying everybody in the palace. Now, how believable is that? The only people who believe that are people who really want to believe it. So they claim they launched a big investigation, and then the findings were that they decided they weren't going to publish it because they didn't want to cause any more problems. Now, they are trying to make it look like they're taking the high road now that they don't want to cause any more trouble between Meghan and Harry and the palace. And that's just BS. 
Because if they didn't want to cause any problems, they would not have publicized any investigation in the first place. If they needed to do an investigation, they, was, they would have done the investigation and handled it in-house. The public didn't need to know about that. What it is, is they don't want to come out here and say what she did. Because then she could file a lawsuit against them, which she has proven that she will do. And then they don't want to be left holding the bag because most likely this was just something they made up in the first place to take the public's mind off Megan's interview with Oprah. And so now that they realized, they thought the public was going to forget about it. And now people are asking, well, what was the results of the investigation? Who was she bullying? When did she bully them? And what did she do? So those are hard questions. Those are questions that have to be answered where? In court. So they don't want that. So now they're trying to back away from it and try to make it look like they are trying to do what's best for Megan. That's the kind of gaslighting that she has exposed herself to. I don't believe Megan knew what she was getting into. When they announced their engagement in the garden at, I think it was Kensington Palace, Megan was happy. She was glowing. She was excited about going to work. She said, I'm ready to go to work. Put boots on the ground. I believe she was sincere. I believe she wanted to be a useful member of that family. Now, I find that troubling given the history of that family. But I believe she thought there was a place for her in that family and she was ready to take her place. Man, oh man, that has backfired on her in a monumental way. So the strikes against Meghan Markle are, number one, she has traceable African ancestry. Number two, she is an American. And number three, she's an actress. Oh, and let's not forget, she's a divorcee. She's been married before. They look down on anybody that's been married before. So those things were going to work against her anyway. But the fourth thing that's causing Megan problems, and it is major too, and that is the fact that Megan and Harry make for a more exciting, more photogenic, more publicly aware couple than Prince William and Kate Middleton. They are a threat to the popularity of William and Kate. Whenever Meghan and Harry show up, they command the spotlight. The eyes of the cameras stay on them because they are such a charismatic and photogenic couple. Every movement that they make, what she's wearing, their gestures, what they're saying, they will have a lip reader on hand to try and decipher what they're saying to each other. So when they show up, they're the stars of the show. Now here's why Meghan and Harry are such a problem. The British royal family operates on popularity. They have to be popular with the British public and the British public has to see them as being relevant and worth the money they pay in taxes to keep them going. So to that end, Prince Charles, who is next in line to be the king, should be the most popular, which he is not. Then Prince William, who is behind Prince Charles as heir to the British throne, and his wife should be the next most popular. And they are not. Now, if Meghan Markle hadn't shown up, Kate Middleton might be enough. But Kate Middleton has about as much charisma as a broom. They dress her up in all those high fashion clothes and she looks like a dressed up broom with a battery in the back. So Megan has all of the qualities that they need in a crown princess or crown princess to be, but they need those qualities in Kate Middleton. So that makes Megan more of a problem. In black America, we talk about people being messy. So-and-so is messy. They keep up mess all the time. But usually this is frivolous stuff compared to what these people are doing to this woman. What we do is child's play. These people are vicious. They're vindictive. They're liars. Even the British people themselves will verify some of the lying that goes on from that palace. I have never seen anything like the crucifixion of this woman before. I have never seen it before. Even back in the day when everybody was talking about O.J. Simpson, it wasn't to this level of hatred. Either you believed he did it or you didn't. 
that it wasn't this level of hatred. This, this woman hasn't done anything to anybody. But the hatred and venom against her is nonstop. I don't see how she stands it. Because it's a lot of it in social media. A lot of it is social media. But it's also tabloids. And every story gets worse than the other. If somebody says something good about Megan, 10 stories are going to come out against her. And they, it's like they have to, in order for them to try to make Kate Middleton and Prince William look good, they have to put Megan down. They'll say some ugly things about Harry, but the person that they really stomp on is Megan. Now, I can hear somebody in the background saying those are rich people's problems, and she brought it on herself. And to a certain extent, that's true. She brought it on herself in that she thought the world was a whole lot better than what it really is. And as far as money is concerned, money can do a lot. We all know that. Money can do a lot. But money cannot buy you peace. And that's what she probably would like to have a little bit of now. But it's always something. If it's not coming out of England, it's coming out of her family. Her father and her sister. So it's non-stop against her. Hopefully she was built for the journey she's on. Sometimes I think about Queen Esther in the Bible when I think about Meghan Markle. Where Esther's cousin said to her, Who knows but that you were brought here for such a time as this. I hope there's a greater purpose in what Meghan Markle is going through. Because she is really in a very challenging position. So the amusing part of it, if there is an amusing part, is that they really want Harry back. They want him back. They don't want Megan, but they want him. They want Harry in, and Harry wants out. Now, Prince Andrew, who has been in a big scandal, he is the Queen's son, said to be the favorite son. He's been in a big scandal that I'm sure everybody has heard about. They want him out. He tries to sneak back in, but they have to push him out. So they want one out who wants in and they want one in who wants out. So <laughs> we'll have to see how that plays out. But it is ugly against uh, Harry and Meghan because they, they've even gone after their children saying Meghan never had those children. Those are not Harry's children. Just saying any vicious thing against against that couple. I don't see how people do it, and I don't know how they sleep at night. I know some of it is for money, clickbaits. But if you're that desperate, you need to get a job. You really do, because you're working in Satan's plan, and that, that never ends well. So while they're trying to set something up for Megan, something else might come down on them. But I'm going to keep Megan lifted up in prayer, because I don't think anybody deserves this. However you feel about their union, their relationship, them in the public's eye. Nobody deserves to be under 24-hour attack when you have not committed a crime. Nobody deserves this. So I'm keeping her and her family lifted up in prayer. I hope that people will have a change of heart and leave this couple alone. They got out, let them stay out. Leave them alone. But let me know what you think about this. Even if you're not interested, please just tell me what you think about the ongoing harassment of this couple. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.